What's up guys, Yale Greenfield, AKA The Live King, back with another episode of the Poker Vlog. Before I head over to the Commerce Casino today, we're gonna start out with a food review. And wow, this place completely knocked my socks off. Can't recommend it enough, Kuya Lord. It's located in East Hollywood, and it's run by Chef Lord Maynard Lera, is bringing Filipino food that is representative of his hometown, Lucena. And this place is a baby born out of the pandemic. He launched it out of his garage in 2020, and he started doing delivery in June of 2022 or thereabout, he opened up this 28-seat restaurant and started serving his version of Filipino food. The main items here is Lucenachan. And Lucenachan is a pork belly roasted and braised, I believe. Very, very moist. A lovely crispy skin. In the tray, java rice, tomato and cucumber salad, chami noodle type dish, and also papaya salad. We ordered a side of the mommy, a Filipino style ramen, which we dumped some chili oil in. Absolutely delicious. Also had the savory sausage. It was very herbaceous. We finished off the meal with calamansi pie, what the Filipinos do as a key lime pie. The food here is so aromatic, sweet, sour, pungent, tart, even acidic. Everything works together so well. You gotta get over to Kuya Lord, check out what this chef is doing. I don't think you can find anything like it in the United States. Now, gonna head over to Commerce, get a little grind in. See you guys at the very end for a little recap about what I was seeing, feeling, and thinking. Today, we're coming at you from Commerce Casino, the most wild and crazy place to play in all of Los Angeles. So much nonsense occurring here. In this first one, we pick up Pocket Jacks and race to $75. The configuration here is 5, 10, 20, and you're gonna see that all day, but at the Commerce, the $20 is not live. It's an agreed upon blind raise by the table. Small blind's gonna call, as is the straddle. Three of us hit this flop, and it's 752 two hearts. This goes off the rails pretty quick when the small blind leads for 125. Straddle gets out of the way, and in sequence versus this guy, he's got all of this board. Sure, we have him beat a fair bit, but I go with a call this time, and I'm gonna see what develops on the turn. It's a four of hearts, so the flush is in, and he quickly checks it to us. Against this guy in particular, and against most opponents in sequence, this seems like a really good spot to go for value and protection. 275. So we go 275. And he's quickly in there. Rivers of six of spades, not a good one. He checks to us. Tons of straights and two pairs are now available. So I check it back. Got a deuce. You're good. And apparently he had a deuce. We fast roll him. Drag a pretty good pot on this very first hand of the day. There's a lot of craziness going on in this hand, so stay with me here. Yours truly has filmed a touch late, as I'm prone to do. Low jack slim for 20. We've got pocket sevens in the hijack. Isolate him to 90. My buddy Tony in the two seat is a WSOP bracelet winner. He's chowing down on some Dan Dan noodles. Small blind action guy has called. He's gonna be the person to pay attention to in every single hand. Top right corner of your screen, seat number three. Low jack is in there as well. Check dark. Small blind's gonna dark check. Solid play. And it's 973, two hearts. Middle set, incredible flop. They've checked it to us. We fire off 180. Seat three calls. And the low jack's in there. We've got an incredible opportunity to win a big pot, but we're definitely fading a ton. It's a nine of diamonds on the turn, a complete gin card. 
Lojack checks out a turn, small blind checks, so now they've both checked somehow. And this is a card I typically wouldn't be betting because I'm against two opponents. It's kind of hard to have a nine in sequence, but unblocking it, this is an awesome spot for us. It's just a question, how do we proceed? We eventually go for 325, trying to entice flush draws and straight draws to continue. Small blind calls, no great surprise there. And the low jack is in there quickly. Suddenly, this pot is ballooning, and it's a deuce of spades river. Now, the small blind is reaching for chips. And firing for $680. Definitely don't expect this. Maybe he has missed a flush draw here. Maybe he trapped a nine and is leading it. Beats me. Tony's changing out his $500 chip that he bet with because he's told the $500 chip doesn't play. Another odd thing happening in the middle of this hand. Lojack gets out of the way, and now with the action on us, we're obviously thinking, let's just get the rest of it in here. All in. So we pile it, Rip City, 1995 and all. While seat three is thinking, seat two, Tony is going to wipe his brow. And now we're just hoping this guy calls with any nine or just anything he has. A non believer, if you will. I call. And he does call. Oh, wow. Wow. He's not going to be able to beat this hand. Thank you. $5,805 our way. In this one, we've got King 10 of hearts in the cutoff. Under the gun and hijack have both limped. We shoot it up to 135. This might look a little bit like a big size, and you'd be correct if that's what you're thinking. However, at this point in the session, I now realize this is a game of no fold em hold em. Nobody's folding. So we're just gonna go linear, huge sizes, and build pots. Straddle and hijack come along and we take a flop of Jack-10-3 Rainbow. They both check, and I feel like middle pair good kicker is a good combo to check back. King of clubs on the turn, so now we have first and third pair, but the straddle likes his hand. He's gonna bet 135. Hijack folds, calling or raising seem okay, but I favor a call when our opponent can have every combination of suited and offsuit, queen nine. So I do go ahead and call. Five of hearts on the river, pretty good for us. But the straddle keeps on firing to the tune of $385. Now I've got a little bit of a decision. Typically, I wouldn't see this as a raising candidate, but against this guy specifically, it very well may be. All right, no raise. I have a pretty good hand. Yeah, 10. No good. I decide to just call. He verbalizes 10, so kind of a merged hand or a bluff. And I think this was probably an error on my part but we do drag in another pot here. In this one, middle position's raised to 60. The hijack action guy's called, small blind's called, and we've called ace nine of hearts in the big blind. Four of us hit this flop, and it's ace jack four with two clubs. Small blind checks, we quickly check. Preflop razor checks, and the action guy checks behind quickly. Eight of hearts on the turn. Small blind checks, and so do we. Now the preflop raiser is reaching for a bet of 125. Hijack hates folding, so he calls. Small blind quickly calls. And now maybe we have a little bit of a decision here. We probably have the best hand at a pretty good frequency, but it's not super strong, so I just call. Looking for a clean river, and we get the exact opposite on this eight of clubs. Small blind checks. We check. Preflop Razor checks after some thought. And now the hijack action guy quickly firing 280. Small blind lets it go. And with this hand against this guy, I just feel we've got no choice. It's price taking time. Preflop Razor folds finally. 10 high, you win. And our man announces 10 high. So maybe it was something like 
10 9 specifically for a busted straight draw. And we drag ourselves a nice little pot here. In this one, Lojax limped, the buttons limped, and we've made it $155 out of position from the small blind with pocket nines. The action guy calls from the low jack, of course. And the button who's joined us in nearly every hand is in there as well. Flop is 732 rainbow. Pretty solid for pocket nines. And you'll see my cards begin to vibrate. That's because the guy to my left, who is a super, super nice guy, has been banging his chips on the table the entire day. And I'm just trying to hold onto my camera for dear life so I can show you guys this sweet action vlog. We eventually bet 275 after grabbing a hold of our camera. And the low jack raises us to 600. Button's taking his time. And eventually folds. So with the action back on us, kind of a weird spot. It's certainly not a size that I ever want to fold to. Three betting seems like a bit of an overplay. It's going to be really hard to improve our hand unless we hit a nine and only a nine. But I got a call. Queen of hearts on the turn. And I quickly check it over to one of the biggest action guys I've ever played with in my life. And he checks it back, which is a sight I like to see. Ten of diamonds on the river. And against him, I think block betting could be a dangerous option. He might just go completely ham on us. Thus, I go for the check. And look at him, top right corner of your screen, instantly puts out a bet of 700, and I waste no time calling. Oh, fuck, I missed. And he shows us the KJO. Hmm. Tried a little flop raise with two overs, slowed down on the turn for some reason, and we pick him off on the river. This has been the most chaotic filming session of my 28 vlog career. I simply cannot hold on to my camera because the guy to my left keeps shaking the table, shaking my camera. I'm just holding on to it for dear life. So I gotta apologize again for being late. But what's happened here is we've opened a 90 and picked up three calls from the hijack, big blind, and straddle. Flops jack seven two, rainbow. We have a backdoor flush draw and an overcard. Two checks to us, we check, and so does the hijack. Turns a five of hearts, bringing us the nut flush draw. And now the action guy fires 175 into the field. Straddle folds. We call, looking to hit a heart. And the hijack's out of the way. Heads up to the river. And it's a seven of spades brick. Action guy fires again, this time for 375. And for the first time today, I finally fold to this guy. In this one, it's gonna be a $25 bomb pot with six players total. That means everybody anti's pre-flop, no pre-flop raising allowed outside of that, and then it's normal poker once the flop begins. We've got King Jack off on the button, and the flop comes King 4 3 rainbow. Check. Check. Check it. Check it. Everybody checks. And before I'm able to act on my hand, the dealer prematurely burns and turns. So this is a bit of a problem, but it's overcomable. I'm still gonna be able to act on the flop and bet $50. The turn card will go back into the deck. It will get shuffled in and have an opportunity to possibly come back on the river along with any other remaining card in the deck. Small blind's gonna call my 50 and so is middle position. Eventually the turn card comes out and it's a seven of hearts. So the straight six five comes in which is a holding either opponent could possibly have. They're both gonna check to me. And against a lot of opponents, I would probably check here. But against these guys, I like going for value. And I size up, I go 250 into 300. Small blind folds. My action guy's undeterred per usual. He needs to see all five in every hand. Rivers a deuce of hearts. He checks. Check's good. And I quickly check back. King's good. I needed a five to get there. We fast roll him, showing him top pair. And here, I think against most opponents, checking is best. However, against this guy, I might have messed up and missed a little bit of value on the river. This hand starts out with my camera being rocked 
all around once again today. A little bit of shaking here. So we're going to freeze frame it, and I'm going to catch you up with what's happened. The under-the-gun action guy is raised to 80. That's a size I haven't seen him use a ton. I don't really know what to make of it, but I don't read too much into it. The middle position nitty player has called. We call on the button with 5-5. Five five, and the small blind is coming along as well. Four of us take a flop. And bang! Middle set on 8-5-2 rainbow. A very safe flop. Everybody checks to the middle position guy, and he fires 155 into the field. Certainly an indication of strength based on what I've seen from him thus far. In this spot, we've only got a decision between call and raise, of course, but my intuition says calling is best, and here's why. I want to keep the action guy in, hoping that he peels flop and hits something on the turn, where he can continue and we can get value from him going forward. The small blind does fold, and three of us go to the turn, which is a three of hearts. So the board's getting a little bit wetter now, and the action guy checks the middle position player, who fires 375. So going through my thought process here, at this point, when under the gun action guy check calls the flop and this card turns, I don't think he's really gonna have it very often. I think his check call range consists mostly of many over cards that don't hit the turn. I think if he had cards surrounding the 8-5 deuce flop, such as straight draws, that he probably would have stayed on the betting lead himself. However, he checked on the flop, making me think he just kind of has two random cards, maybe with a backdoor flush draw most of the time. So now I've got my eyes set on stacking the middle position player, who I think is strong here. I make it 1100 to go. Now, I don't know if this is good. There's definitely some merit in continuing to trap and try to keep the action guy in the hand further. But look at this. Surprise, surprise to me, the action guy moves all in for $6,295. The middle position player instantly folds, and now I'm in a serious conundrum. This guy is absolutely crazy. Tons of stabbing, lots of small bets, all different kinds of shit all over the board. It's really hard to say what he's ever doing in a hand. But what I can tell you is that I've never seen a bet from him that's been this big all day and probably about eight hours of play. We've got pocket fives, which gives us a set. Folding seems almost ludicrous, but he has bet over 300 big blinds just on the turn alone. Pocket eights would probably be an insta call, I think, but pocket fives is almost the same thing because I don't think eights really make a ton of sense. What I do think is that this type of bet from this guy is just the lock nut. What you got? What you got? Seven deuce? I can beat that. Okay. <laughs> show me, uh, no, don't show me shit. I don't think I can call. Nice hand. I think so. It's over $5,000 back to me. Yeah. Good bluff if you're bluffing. It's a great bluff. It's a great bluff. And I find the fold, and wow, he actually shows us what he has. Six of spades, four of clubs. That's a turn gut shot for the nut straight. Pretty good fold if I do say so myself in an absolutely gross, gross spot. Nice hand, Brian. Well, that was really something else, really. Really an all-time special session, not in terms of money won and lost, but the guy who I tangled with in every single hand played, I swear I saw him fold three times in like nine hours. I'm not even kidding. Just complete craziness. And he wasn't shy about it. Like he didn't really care. He's like, yeah, I'm here to play. I'm, I'm a donkey, I'm a fish, whatever. Like, okay, well, we're here to play. I saw him yo-yo his stack from a couple thousand. I saw it go to six. Then I saw it go back down to like as low as 2K. And then he got it up to 10K. And then he ran it back down to 6K. And it was just like, it was fucking crazy. Like, I don't know. It was just really, really crazy. Like even by like the best games that I've ever sat anywhere, like this guy was just a complete all timer in terms of the amount of action he gave. The other thing about when you're in a game like that, I think you just pray. 
Like you just throw your hands up. It's a card catching contest. There isn't a lot of pure poker or pure poker strategy being played in that type of setting. There was the one hand that I had, which was strategically interesting, when I chose to flat the set of fives on the button, uh, trying to keep the action guy in, and uh, you saw, you know, it bit me, it bit me bad. And then the turn raise when a couple different straight draws come in. I'm gonna review that one with my friends because they know better than me. But uh, yeah, otherwise, I mean, hey, hard to complain. That's a top tier game. That's, that's, that's a game where you're not looking to get better, but you're just looking to make as much money as humanly possible and make cash we did. So results, results of the night. Uh, looking at my sheet here, cause I don't carry my money. I was in for $1,800. I was out for 65, 63. That's a good profit considering I lost a monster at the end of the night. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching as always. My producer and I really appreciate it. We're gonna to continue to push out these vlogs from Los Angeles, more action coming your way. I'm gonna keep commentating on Live at the Bike on Fridays. Come check that out if you want. And please, if you're enjoying this, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, shoot me a comment, tell me about some of the craziest sessions you've ever played yourself because this was an all-timer. Life King out.